Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel. And today I'm here with David Elsley, the president, CEO, and founder of Cardio Therapeutics, uh, a clinical stage life sciences company, which is listed on the NASDAQ that focuses on the development of new treatments for heart disease. How are you today, David? I'm great, Chris, and thanks for having us today. It's great to be here. Uh, what are the specific diseases that your company is targeting? Uh, the most important programs that we're targeting currently are two uh, devastating forms of heart disease in that they manifest themselves in a generally younger population who are typically otherwise healthy. So we have a global program in acute myocarditis, which you've most likely read about in the media, given that it's primarily caused by a viral infection. Historically, that would have been the influenza virus by way of example, but now it is a secondary consequence or been described as a complication of the COVID virus. Uh, it's a rare complication of mRNA vaccine strategies, and it's an increasingly lethal combination or consequence of the increasing use of certain chemotherapeutic agents in the treatment of cancer. So that's a condition that remains a leading cause of sudden cardiac death in people under the age of 30. And there's currently no accepted standard of care for that uh, condition. And we have a global program in that. And our second and perhaps uh, equally important program is in recurrent pericarditis. This is a US-led study. This is another form of heart inflammation or inflammation of the, of the heart. In this case, as opposed to the heart muscle, it's the sac that surrounds the heart. It's very debilitating because the heart pumps against uh, friction caused by inf inflammation of this sac, and it causes very significant pain in these patients, so much so that they're basically immobilized because if they increase their heart rate, uh, they, um, this pain syndrome intensifies. And there's been one treatment approved for that indication over the past year and a half, uh, but that treatment comes at a very high cost. Uh, it costs upwards of $200,000 per patient per year, and it's a very powerful therapy. So it's used as more a second or third line treatment. Uh, and certain young folks don't want to take such a powerful therapy because there could be side effect issues or toxicological concerns down the, downstream. Now, your treatments are in the category what um, is known as orphan drug um, treatments. And, and what, is, what is the importance or, or the advantages uh, of, of targeting this type of treatment? The US FDA and other major regulators around the world basically incentivize the pharmaceutical industry to develop new important treatments for rare diseases defined in the US as any disease that affects less than 200,000 Americans at any one time. And the incentives they provide to the industry to focus on these rare conditions is they offer an accelerated path to development, a reduced cost, of uh, development fees, and perhaps most importantly, post-market, a period of prolonged market exclusivity that can range in the US seven to nine years, which is a monopoly enforced by the regulators or the FDA, and then in other regions of the world up to 10 years monopoly. So this provides companies with basically an opportunity to uh, own the market that they've uh, taken the risk to develop. And we're very pleased to be participating uh, in this orphan drug designation program, uh, given that uh, you know these conditions are, are devastating and there's really not great treatment options for either of the lead orphan programs that we have underway. And uh, currently what stage of the, is your uh, programs at? And you've had some recent news about some studies as well. So maybe you could just touch on those points. Uh, so our acute myocarditis program is a global trial. In fact, it's the largest clinical program. Uh, it's a phase two program. It's the largest clinical program ever to be undertaken in acute myocarditis in basically over 50 years since the steroid studies were conducted back in the 80s. Uh, so that really underscores the need for um, new efforts to um, to resolve this issue that can lead to fulminant heart failure in a young, healthy 20-year-old with no history of cardiac uh, risk factors. And then with respect to uh, recurrent pericarditis, that's also a phase two program. That's a U.S.-based study 
we just recently announced, which might be what you're referring to, that the Cleveland Clinic, one of the largest, if not the largest, recurrent pericarditis centers in the world, uh, recruited the first patient into that trial. So now we have two orphan drug eligible programs recruiting patients. The acute myocarditis is global, North America, Latin America, Europe, as well as Israel. And then in the context of recurrent pericarditis, we have a U.S. trial uh, underway, which we believe uh, has the potential to lead to a pivotal registration trial that could see our drug uh, approved uh, in the coming two years. And how many patients do you need for each study? Uh, so the acute myocarditis program is enrolling 100 patients at centers throughout the world. And the uh, recurrent pericarditis program is referred to as a pilot study or open label trial where we're in recruiting 25 patients, all of whom will receive active therapy. So we can look for preliminary signals of efficacy and use that information to design the pivotal registration trial, which has the potential to underpin FDA approval for the use of this uh, treatment in recurrent pericarditis. And these, so, these um, I'm sorry, I, I just thought it, it, it's important to mention that these conditions are not inexpensive to care for. So an average hospitalization for acute myocarditis, for example, in a young 20 year old can run over a hundred thousand dollars. And in the context of recurrent pericarditis, you have what we believe to be the most expensive cardiac drug as one therapeutic option at over $200,000. And then hospitalizations run over $30,000 per hospitalization. So these are uh, not only have a profound adverse impact on quality of life uh, in these young folks, uh, they also have a significant cost burden to the healthcare system. That's great. What can investors expect uh, for news flow for the rest of 2023? Over the next, uh, certainly 2023, over the next 12 to 18 months, I think we have a very strong, strong news flow. So we'll complete the recruitment into our recurrent pericarditis study, and we'd expect data flow from that trial. We'll complete recruitment into our global acute myocarditis trial, and we'd expect important data from that study as well. We're also working on a new formulation to target to larger markets, potentially such as heart failure, which is a mass global market, orders of magnitude larger in size than the uh, acute myocarditis and recurrent pericarditis market uh, that we're speaking of. And it's really driven by uh, increasing prevalence incidence of diabetes, obesity, and hypertension around the world. At any one time, it affects upwards of 26 million people in the developed world. And it's one of the most costly diseases to care for. In the U.S., it runs about $30 billion in healthcare costs. And it's the number one reason people are hospitalized. So that's where the heart fails. And in a large number of those patients, inflammation plays a role in that failure, causing the heart to become fibrotic and inelastic so it doesn't fill efficiently. So the heart never has enough blood to meet metabolic demand. And we potentially uh, can help resolve that issue with a new form of drug that we're developing. And we look forward to speaking more to that over the next 12 to 15 months. Well, that's great. I think that's a good update for investors. And uh, I thank you for your time, David. Have a great day. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having us.